Hello and welcome back in the studio after the break. Uh, I'm joined by a complete legend here, Jay okay. from Legend State and Legend List and all of the Legend libraries. Hello, Jay. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I, I love the conference. How do you like this, this year's edition? It's been great. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of low-level talks, right? Like very detailed and very C++ and the module federation and my head is just spinning yeah. from all the content. These are the talks I like. It's been good. Yeah. yeah. Like those are the kind of talks that developers love because you can like really uh, look behind the curtain of like what's coming next and not only about how to use like this particular library, but like how the actually how that library actually works under the hood. Yeah. Sorry, I missed your talk. You were I, here. I hear it was great, but I, I I have you here, so let's let's not rehash the talk, but maybe let's talk about like the suit of libraries that you built, L- legend libraries, mm-hmm. uh, very very similar like Tanstack. So like Tanstack has its own like stack of Tanstack yeah. libraries, and then Legend has its own legend. I I did not intend this originally, but I am I guess going that direction of oh yeah, a library that's, of that's libraries, great branding, yeah. consistency. That's yeah. that's all that matters. Do those libraries have something more in common, like a common team? Just they have like the legend name as a common team, but like uh, something more than that. The main theme is performance. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the apps I make, I want to be as high performance as possible, and I'm trying to push React Native and React to be as high performance as possible. Yeah. So I mostly made these for myself for the apps I make to just be as fast as they can be. Mm-hmm. So, like, you create tools for your particular needs because you need the speed. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, uh, I have not needed a list. I just decided to build that because someone needed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is how you do it. Le- Legend State I use in many products. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a full sync engine as well as a state library. Mm-hmm. So I use it for, like, the core of everything. Yeah, I saw your talk on React Native London talking about Legend State and, yeah. like, how it's... Uh, how observability models work there and stuff like that. So uh, maybe drawing on the team of 10 years of React Native, we can talk about like performance of React Native. I know that you said uh, you were not observing the performance of React Native 10 years ago, but like how do you see it as a trend since you started working on those kind of libraries? Well, I started in React Native in, I think, 2017. Uh, That's a long time ago. It was... I th- it might have been 2018. I w- came to React Native EU having never used React Native before, mm-hmm. and it kind of pushed me into using it. Okay. That was a while ago. Um, but then since I started, uh, I basically I was using a library called Knockout.js. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then I just made that for React, and then I made that for React Native once I moved into it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've, I've been doing this kind of style for a long time, but then I saw Hermes come out. Hermes kind of changed everything. Yeah, and then the new architecture has been incredible. Yeah, so that's like a major point in core React Native development. There were that there were some other, huh, mm, developments on on the outskirts of React Native as well. So like things like Flashlist, for example, right, and your libraries, and then all of the performance tooling for measuring, and uh, yeah. I feel like a few years ago, from my perspective, a few years ago when people started adopting React Native into bigger products, performance was the biggest asterisk. Is it as performant as native? So I feel like we got to the point where this is no longer a major topic of discussion, mm-hmm. but just something to have in mind. But like the major topic of discussion became stability mm-hmm. and became like a maturity of React Native. Yeah, do you have any opinions about that? Uh, I think performance can still be better. Uh, I think lists were still not as good as they could be. Hopefully I've mostly solved that now, mm-hmm. with legend lists. But then also, there's a lot more you can improve with... Uh, I think state is the biggest bottleneck in mm-hmm. performance, actually, and people don't really think about it that much. But the biggest performance problem in React is just rendering too much. Mm-hmm. And so when state libraries are just triggering renders all the time, it's just... It's bad. But that's like um, the the promise of React from the very beginning was 
if I change something, I want the whole tree underneath to, to re-render. Yeah. With React Compile, with use memo and use callback, we start in opting out of this behavior. Yeah. And then with React Compiler, it's enabled by default that we are opting out of this behavior. Mm -hmm. So I guess like we went full, full circle with this approach. Yeah. Um, what do you think about all of those like different performance libraries, performant libraries? We have so many options right now. Uh, which one to choose and why is it legend? Well, I think, <laughs> I like that question. Uh, I think basically, as you're saying in React, the way things work is you change something at the top, it goes all the way down. Yeah. And you try to opt out of it, but it's, um, it's kind of not performant by default. You have to make it better yourself. Mm -hmm. Compiler helps with this quite a bit. But the legend state model is more of if something changes down here, just change it down here. Mm -hmm. And then you can have global state or state in context somewhere, but it only re-renders the actual things that changed. And so you can make your renders just tiny and less often, and that makes performance much better. So do you like bypass the whole React reconciliation or do you like just like store this like atomic state on the component level that no, it's needs it? It's still global state, but it's using kind of a signaling system. Mm -hmm. And so the component subscribes to the state it cares about mm -hmm. and it re-renders itself when it changes. Okay. And so if a component here doesn't care about state over there, it just doesn't care. Whereas with props or with context, everything that listens to context is yeah. all going to render. Mm -hmm. Props are going to go all the way down. Uh, so we're trying to just make it only the small things that actually need to re-render will. Okay. And it helps performance a lot. Do you want to talk about something other than legend? <laughs> uh, I want to like uh, pick your ear a little bit about like the state of re style. Not state, but like the shape of React Native and React communities. Mm. Like over, you've been a part of this community, like you said, for many years. So like, how do you see us evolving like from this 2018 something until now, six years later? Uh, well, I think it's gotten a lot easier. To start with React Native? Yeah, yeah. I think there was also a big shift that happened in Expo a few years ago mm -hmm. where it became kind of like you either use Expo or do it yourself. And now it's just just use Expo for everything. I feel like the question, would, like the the shift to the Expo, was uh, either Expo or nothing. But that was like a binary choice and very maybe maybe not easy to make, but easy to understand. Right now, it's a uh, we have sixteen hundred um, pieces, and you can pick and choose whatever you like from yeah. our stack. And yeah. like it became. Uh, a really powerful tool and not all or nothing, but also like harder to understand the whole scope and whole ecosystem. Mm. And like imagine that Expo is just like part of React Native ecosystem. And then we have the, all the other parts. So if when you say that it's easier to start for people, I feel like it is easier to come in and create better apps that you could have years ago yes but at the same time the choice is so wide right now mm. so uh if someone is not following this uh react universe con they don't know if they should use legend list because like yeah. it's not probably like mentioned on the main docs on the main docs you still see the flat list right yeah yeah, yeah. i don't know how to solve that problem because new libraries are going to come in and out and if the official docs recommend individual libraries then oh yeah like th 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 that's not the solution yeah. definitely yeah. it's not the solution but it's yeah i don't know how to solve that problem that's a tough one yeah uh maybe we can create just make more podcasts and more content yeah. yeah but one thing i'm excited about is uh i've been playing with desktop apps a lot recently mm -hmm. and react native on desktop is just absolutely incredible mm -hmm. so i've been telling everyone i can about how good it is uh but i think that's also very exciting and we have this huge library of react native that we can just suddenly use it to make mac apps and windows apps yeah i want to play around with it actually like I, i'm convinced you you got my vote for it i'm gonna try it out on one of the live streams maybe hmm. to try to like stitch something quick together and like see what happens the problem with that is um that the mobile apps you can create your own like to do app, I, like some kind of utility that you need for budgeting. Maybe I created this like shortcut on iPhone to like allow me to add expenses. Me and my wife, we add expenses and then like it all works. I don't need that on desktop because like I need that in my sure. life, like on in, in my pocket. Yeah. So what would be like the use case for a 
good first time project on desktop app? Well, the easy one is typing is hard on a phone. So thing an app where you need to type a lot is mm. better on desktop. Okay. Uh, so like productivity tools, uh, I'm, I made a, a little photos app so I can import photos from a camera. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't really do that on a phone. Uh, I've been making a music app to play with, an app for managing GitHub issues, just things I'm prototyping. Okay. But they're just hard to do on a small form factor. So things that you really want to be productive with, you just need a desktop form factor, I think. Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you so much for joining me here. Sure. And uh, I will see you at the after party. All right, see you then. Thanks a lot.